I'm good. All right. First and foremost, we would like to give all praise on and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Bahasha, Bahashim, Rakakadash, double honor unto the apostles and elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great example to our younger brothers. And peace and blessing, salutations, and hopefully they got there pushing this word of truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of you. How about your mouth shot pushing and get up out of here? Shalom on to the leg, the believers, all right, the listeners who have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in you. How about your mouth shot? And what I want to do, you know, uh, what we're going to do today, all right, with GMS Mississippi Camp, GMS Memphis, you know, we just want to bring out a lesson, you know, something that we were discussing, you know, after class, you know, last week, you know, dealing with how, you know, we're about with price, you know, because people don't understand, all right, when you go into the scriptures, we have particular laws, all right, pertaining, you know, to um, <laughs> being a kinsman redeemer. And when you go into your house, shot, what he did, you know, uh, understanding of the Old Testament, you know, brings out more, all right, of the understanding of what Yahweh Shai, you know, actually did for the nation, you know? So when you understand the Old Testament, the custom and ways, you know, of our people, that opens up, all right, clarity, you know, dealing with the scriptures. So what we're going to do, we're going to start in the New Testament, and then we're going to go get the tradition in the Old Testament, link it up in the spirit, you know? Y'all brothers had anything? All right, let's let's uh, let's get that in uh, the, the First Peter, bro. Uh, this is First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Yep. It said, for, for, as, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Yeah, so what tradition is he speaking of? Because he said we were redeemed, all right, but not of vain things as silver and gold as the conversation of our fathers, all right, which is our forefathers. So what was the apostle Peter speaking of, all right? That's why we have to understand the customs, you know, of our forefathers. So let's get that. Stay right there, Corral. We're gonna read that next verse. But get um yeah, get that Leviticus, bro. Yeah, this is on Leviticus. Leviticus 25 and uh 47. Yep. And if a sojourner or stranger was wish by thee, and that brother that dwelled by him was poor, and send himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to do the stock of the stranger families. After that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. Yeah, so he said if a sojourner or a stranger, and we go into the word stranger in the Hebrew, it's Gar, which lets you know that's the Israelite, all right? Because when you go into the law of the stranger, if an Israelite, you know, will move, you know, and let's just say two or three generations down, they had children that want to return back to the land. Well, if they could prove, all right, their lineage through their father, they were supposed to be allotted, you know, land in Israel according to the size of their family. Now, if a, a stranger came back, 
you know, Israelite came back and he became rich amongst Israel. And let's say uh, one of the Israelites in the land was poor. And he sold himself pretty much in the captivity, you know, because when you go into the relationship of an employer and the employee, like when you put in the application at a job, you're selling yourself to Walmart. You selling yourself, you know, to Amazon, you know, because you're what you're giving them your time. All right. For what? For money and for resources. So back in the ancient world, you had ways that the poor, you know, would be able, you know, to come up. When you go into our custom, they had a way that they can come up. They can really put they they can sell themselves and servitude to another Israelite and work, you know, and build themselves up and be able to buy you know themselves out of it but if they can buy themselves out of that situation you know you had a redeemer kinsman that was able to buy them out that situation and it's going to go into it go ahead you keep reading bro because i had to be with myself this uh back in leviticus 25 or 49 either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him or any that is not of kin unto him, or his family may redeem him, or if he be able, he may redeem himself. Yep. And so, he, matter of fact, matter of fact, so read that again. Yeah. Leviticus was twenty-five and um forty-nine. Let me Leviticus twenty-five forty-nine. It said, either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any oh, that is not that. of kin. Unto we started four days. Yes, we read four days again. All right, uh, Leviticus twenty-five for eight. After that, he is sold. He may redeem again. He may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. One of his he brethren was, may redeem him. So it starts with his brethren, his brothers. All right, and then after his brothers, go ahead. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him. Or any that is not of kin unto him of his family may redeem him. Or if he be able, he may redeem himself. Yeah, so that would that will um what you would call the redeemer kinsman. You know, if my if my uh little brother sold himself, you know, into captivity because he came into poverty, you know, and I came up on some money while he was within all right, his captivity because you got to understand why he was serving another Israelite man. He had a certain amount of years that he already promised himself to this Israelite man, you know? So in order to get him out of it, I would have to compensate, all right, the Israelite that he sold himself to those years that was promised. I had to buy them years back, you know, for my little brother, you see? And they were part of the customs of ancient Israel. So now we understand what Yahweh Shah was doing. <laughs> was you gonna go back to it? Now before we get that, get um is I'll get Deuteronomy 28 and 68. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, and it reads, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. You see that? Hey, so you see what the most I was doing? You see, our people understood the law. So what he was saying, look, I'm going to put y'all on ships, which is uh, transatlantic slave trade. You know, you're going to be uh, sold for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. What was the most I speaking of? Going back to our customs. You see, nobody could buy us out this contract. We had, we had to be under, all right, kept under captivity until Esau. Nobody could buy us out this country. If it was an Israelite, you know, they came across a hundred trillion dollars, two hundred trillion dollars, you know, 
he couldn't buy the nation out. He couldn't give Esau, look, I got 200, 300 trillion dollars. Here you go. Let me get, let me, let me redeem all my brethren. No, that was part. He could, it, he said, no man should buy you. That means ain't, you ain't going to be able to be redeemed at this captivity. You see, until, <laughs> you see, he set it up where his son was going to be the only one to redeem us, man, to buy us back. All right. <laughs> so now let's get that in. Uh, um, uh, uh, go back to first Peter. All right. Uh, chapter one, read 18 again. You know, it, it should make more sense. Go ahead. This is first Peter's chapter one, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Yep. But with the precious blood of Hamashiach as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Yeah, so we were bought with what? The blood of Yahweh. You see that? It wasn't money back then you know our forefathers they would give physical money physical resources to buy all right to buy their brethren out of captivity you know but this captivity we was bought in blood you see what well, Yahweh shot did that purchase that <laughs> he made a purchase for the nation of israel you see jake back around here being disrespectful all right and not understanding you know, you know, Jake on this whole anti-Messiah, you know, uh, anti Yahushua movement. But you don't understand, Yahushua bought the whole nation <laughs> with his blood. Like what he did, he bought the whole nation, man. God, from under that first, from under their first covenant, pretty much from under, you know, the um, the consequence of sin. All right, but you got it, bro. I like it, bro. Uh, this um Isaiah 52 and 3. For thus saith the Lord, you have a small shy, you have sold yourselves for naught, and ye should be redeemed without money. Ooh, we does Isaiah 52. Yep. Yo, the brother had just put read again. Oh, okay, that's the spirit. This is Isaiah uh 52 and 3. For thus saith the Lord, you have a small shy, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye should be redeemed without money. You have sold yourselves for naught, and you shall be redeemed without money. All right, because we sold ourselves because of what disobedience. Now, since you and Isaiah get um Isaiah fifty and one, this is Isaiah fifty and one. Thus said the Lord Yahweh, where is the bill of your brother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Yo, yeah, so. so my so like now our mother he said what is the bill of thy mother's divorce whom i have put away now who is the who is the mother of israel all right it's talking about jerusalem you know when jerusalem which above is free is the mother of us all when you go to galatians the fourth chapter so we were separated from that land you know so he put us away from that land go ahead it said, uh, then said the Lord, Yahweh, where is the bed of your mother's divorcement? Whom I have put away, or which of my creditors is is it to whom I have sold you? Yep. Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourself, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Yeah, so he said, Look, most I said, Who do I owe that I had to give you away? You see, because that's another custom, you know, let's just say. I owe Zahab, you know, a certain amount, you know, of money, you know, and I didn't have, you know, the gold or silver to pay him. But if I had servants in my house, I could pay him, you know, through service. I could give him a few of my servants and they would clear my debt that I had with the brother. You see? So the most I was like, look, who, who did I owe that I had to put y'all in captivity, man? But then it say, no, your, for your iniquities, you sold yourselves. <laughs> you see? Go ahead. You got it, bro. Yeah. A scripture to... Yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah. yeah, I got a scripture to back you up on that. This is uh, Jeremiah 15 and 13. 
Thy substance and thy treasures will I give to the spoil without price, and that for all thy sins, even in all thy borders. So the King James Version is kind of weird, so I'm going to read it again in the uh, NIV. It says, Your wealth and your treasures I will give as plunder without charge because of all your sins throughout your country. So it's like stating that, you know, we were spoiled to the heathen nations because of our sins. Like the sins are the ones that made us in debt. It wasn't, so to speak, because it was, we got like the, the ass end of a deal between the nations is because that is the price to pay for us to sin is we would no longer be on top. So in order to redeem all that, Yahweh Shah was that perfect uh, uh, sacrifice. You know, he put in that work to to get his bankroll up, so to speak, to yep. to buy out all those sins. You know. Yep. Hey, that's why. You know, <laughs> when you go in food, man, like what Yahweh Shah did, that was. <laughs> You know, that was, that was, that was, what's, what's, a, what's the word for me? That was astronomical. <laughs> you know, the purchase that he made. You see? <laughs> it, it, they trying to sleep on your house, child, but y'all don't understand, man. <laughs> y'all don't understand your house, child, man. You know, what he did. Now, uh, yeah, brother, I'll get that uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 17 and, um, Read yeah, we're gonna read all the way through. Yep, and get um, Karab, get Isaiah 14, I mean 41 and 14. And uh, I now get Isaiah 49 and uh, 24. Would you uh, you got it, bro? Uh, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doth uh, is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Mm -hmm. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High? And you are not your own. Yep. You are not your own. You see, we are not our own anymore. Hey, because when you when you see yourself in servitude, like I say, with the modern day time, when you apply for a job and you get the job, all right, the first thing they tell you is the shift hours. All right, this the hour you work. All right. So during those hours, it's eight to five, you know, four to eleven, whatever the hours is, you can't do your own thing in them hours. You gotta report <laughs> and do all right what's required of you according to that job. You ain't you ain't yourself no more. You know, it don't matter what you're doing, when it's time to get ready for work, you gotta cut your chalk and get ready to go. You know, because for those hours, you are not your <laughs> You know, you are not that your body is not yours for those hours, man. That body belong your our body belongs to that employer. You see, so with your how was shot, he bought us with a price. You know, our free time that's why the majority of our free time goes to who your how was shot because <laughs> we were bought. We can't just do what we want, you know, we can't not go to camp, we can't not fellowship. You know, we can't not read. We can't not, you know, research. No, we bought with a price. You got to do this. This is what's required of us, man. You see? This ain't this ain't optional. That's what Jake don't, you know, a lot of Jake come in this thing and think it's about a trend, you know, putting fringes on everything. No, we was purchased, man. <laughs> you, we were bought. You know? That's why I say, yo, our temple... Is of the most high. That's why we can't just put anything in our temple, man. Even with this whole, you know, Vanessa. No, this is the our, our vessel is for the most high, man. We can't put that in us, man. 
You see, this is what is the spirit of the most high dwell within us, man. We can't put anything in us, man. You see? Um, you get that uh Kara. Uh you said Isaiah 14. Yep. I didn't read I didn't read uh 20. Yet. Oh, like my best like, but I thought you finished. Go finish that out, bro. First Corinthians 6 and 20. For ye are for ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify the most high in your body and in your yep. spirit, which are the yep. most highs. Yep. You are bought with a price. You know, glorify the most high. All right. You see that? That's what we 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 been bought, man. You know, we've been redeemed from the punishment of sin. You know, not to wild out, no, but to serve the person that bought us out there <laughs> out those consequences, man. You see, and eventually he's gonna come get us out this captivity, which we're gonna which we're gonna get there in Isaiah 49. Uh, go to um, you'll get that in Isaiah 41 and 14, bro. Oh, oh. All right. this is Isaiah 41, verse 19. It says, Uh, I will. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the shatar tree and the myrtle and the oil tree, and I will set in the desert the fire tree and the pine and box tree together. There's on uh, Isaiah 41 and 14. Yeah. Yeah, Isaiah right, 14. Yeah. All right, come on, Salaki. So this is Isaiah 41, verse 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, ye men of Israel. I will help thee, said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Thy Redeemer. You see? See, that's one of the titles of Yahweh by Shem Hashanah, is thy Redeemer. You know? Because he's going to play their part of the kinsman Redeemer for the nation. <laughs> you see? And he did it through who? Yahweh Shai. You see, Yahweh Shai really, he took the death that the whole nation was supposed to take for sin. But he took that death, so we didn't have to take that death. And we pay him back by dedicating our life <laughs> to Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, um, so, ah, real quick before we get to the other Isaiah, get Colossians 3 and uh, 3. I got a preacher too. All right, come on. Yeah, you get it before you get to Isaiah. You got it, bro. This is uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For yep. ye are dead, and your life is hid with Yahweh Shai and Yahweh. Go ahead. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life. You see? This is our life now, because even when we at work, you know, what where our mind is, you know, our body is at work, but our spirit, you know, is on your how shot. That's why you see brother, you know, do less than before work, at work, lunch break. We, we work for somebody else now. We you know, we own these little jobs, our bodies there, you see, but our spirit is still geared towards your how shot. It said, when you have a shot, shall appear who is our life. <laughs> you know? Because we both. You see? You got it, bro. So like, Come on, let, let me start at two. Uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Colossians 3 and 2. Set your affection on things above, not things on, on the earth. Yep, for you break it down. Down. Yeah, because, I mean, just like you said, like, yeah, we're we're here on earth. You know, we report to nine to five jobs. We got lives to live. But in that whole time, you know, we're constantly thinking about the kingdom. We're thinking about Yahweh Shah's return. You know, we're thinking about, you know, the elect being delivered. We're thinking about Esau going into slavery. You know, we're thinking about the the day of our, our Redeemer, man. Mm -hmm. You know? So it says, set your affections affection on things above, not on things on earth. 
So not on things on earth, like, you know, how our next paycheck, you know, or what, you know, what we're going to do this weekend. No, we're thinking, we're concerned about the kingdom of heaven. We don't look uh, uh, for, for life in this kingdom. You know, we're looking for the kingdom of heaven. Uh-huh. It says, for, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Yahweh Shai and Yahweh. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mm-hmm. Cause right, cause right now we're you know basically dead to this world, man. You know, I'm waiting on the house, and then I say, yeah, how was shot? Who is our life? You know, we get caught up in, you, we get so caught up in your house shot. You know, we be behind. You know, brothers don't know none of the new rappers. We don't know who won the finals or nothing. We laid on it. We don't know what's going on because. You know, we get so engulfed in your house shot. You see? And that's just what it is, man. The closer we see them coming, you know, the more our spirit is inclined, you know, to be absorbed, you know, within your house shot. Um, you got that now. Yeah, this is uh, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the Moses of your house of shot. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is a wisdom yep. of service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove that it is the good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh So Yahweh you know, he was an actual sacrifice. <laughs> you see, he was an actual sacrifice, so we can be a living sacrifice. You know, he was put the death on our behalf so we can live a life for him. You know, <laughs> that's 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 that was that was the purpose of what he did. He re, he redeemed us. All right, pretty much he made an investment. You know, hey, because let's just say like, you know, let's, let's just say Karab. You know, on the. Uh, Say you own a construction company, and you had this guy that was in jail, you know, but he was a real good carpenter, you know, he's a real good carpenter. Well, Karab goes to pay his bill, all right, and his fines so he can come work for him. You see, so he come clear all his debts and his bill so that carpenter. Can come work for him. So now that's what your house shot did with us, man. He cleared all our debt so we can come work for him. You know, we don't have to worry about that debt hanging over our head. No, he cleared that out so we can come work for him. <laughs> you see, that what that was about, man. Yeah. Everybody talking about the blood, the blood. You see, you don't understand what that means. <laughs> The house shot purchase <laughs> Israel in his blood, man. You see? You got yeah, it, bro. I got a proof of that. It's Acts 20 and 28. It yeah. said, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers to feed the church of Yahweh Yah- Yah- Shai, which he had purchased with his own blood. Woo! Read again, bro. Read again. Yeah, yeah, because hey, Acts 20 and 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers to feed the church of Yahweh's Mashiach, which he had purchased with his own blood. Yeah, so the brothers and sisters that believe they was purchased through the blood of Yahweh's shot, man. And you got Jake, you know, in these other camps. They'll make it seem like Israel don't, uh, belong to them. You know? They'll make it seem like the, 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 the Israel is their possession. No, man, this is Yahweh Shah's possession. He purchased, all right, the elect, man, and we can't, you know, just teach them anything. You know, we got to feed them according to the true doctrine. You know? And it's just like if, um, you know, uh, 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 nah, if you was a uh, if you was a dog breeder, you know, 
if you were uh you know a, a dog breeder and you put people over you know those dogs man here it is you spend a top dollar you know on these dogs and the people that you hired all right to be overseas over these dogs you know was feeding them you know oreos man you see was putting gas on the oreos and giving it to them feed you know you come back dog sick dog head, dog head dead man you man what the, you know what the hell man but that's what jake is doing when he teaching these off crazy ass doctor he just feeding the sheep anything man Here, this is another man's possession and you gonna feed him anything man and that's what jake is doing so read that one more time man you know the sheep hey how was shot made a purchase with his blood man go ahead Uh, I'm muted. I, uh, I'm not. I'll read that again. I right, so like it. Uh, this Acts 20 and 28. Uh, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers to feed the church of the Most High, which he had purchased with his own blood. He had purchased with his own blood. Feed the church of the Most High, man. Hey, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm going I'm to uh, keep going on this. Up. You got it. It's it said on uh, 29, for I know this, that after my departure, should grievous wolves enter in among you, that spare the flock. Yep. Also, also of your own selves, should men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Yep. And that's what we're seeing happening, you know, especially in these times. You know? <laughs> that's, 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 that's what we see happening, because you see how Especially like with ICPK, man, they got a breakdown, you know, with MOTB. It's horrible, man. You know, IUIC, breakdown of the MOTB, horrible, man. But well, they're grieving as wolves, man. And it came amongst the flock, someone else's flock, you know, to try to make it their own. No, that's why uh, uh, Yahweh Shah say, if you come some other way, you a thief and a robber. Because this is the the, the uh, Israel is another man's possession. How it shot? You see? So um, get, I, uh, I gotta see you. Okay, okay, yeah, get yours out, uh, Karab. No, okay. no, nah, nah, you got you still got it, Isaiah forty nine. Yeah. Okay. All right, get that on, uh, whatever you got. Hi, right, this is uh, Romans 16 and 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not the, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Yep, you know, hearts of the simple, simple, the minds of the simple. You got it, bro. Yeah, kind because whatever contrary is to the doctrine that we learned is, you know, really we learned it through the spirit of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, you know, and whatever they they are teaching, uh, you know, it's serving their own belly because it's for their own entertainment. You know, they look at the flock as, you know, something that is theirs. You know, they can just tell them whatever and they'll believe whatever. And they do it for their own entertainment, you know, their own purpose, their own righteousness, you know. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, I, I had another one, too, because this is uh, John 15 and 15. Because Yahweh Shah even had a different mindset. Even when he called when his disciples, he didn't look at them as, you know, them just to serve him. You know, but this is John 15 and 15. It says, henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever yep. ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Yeah, hey, because he said, I call you no more servants, but friends. Because we gotta think, you know, with those um 
with the disciples, all right, they had to be from the first spirits, you know, that Yahweh Shah created, you know. So it was a real intimate bond between those spirits, you know, like the 144,000 and Yahweh, that's a real, you know, intimate bond between those men. So even though he redeemed, he redeemed them, you know, he purchased them with his blood. He also looked at them as friends as well, man, because you you will redeem your brethren and you didn't rule and see. We didn't rule over each other with rigor like it was a, uh, a law that you couldn't rule over another Israelite with rigor like Esau do. You see these 12, 14 hour shifts, you know, out of the whole year. You get a week and three days for, for a vacation out of a whole year. You know, that's what that's what rigor. Like Esau, he break your body down with his servitude, but uh, Israelite, they didn't Israelites, they didn't do that over each other, man. You know? You had some state on that? Yeah, Karen, because like like the point you were making where you pay uh, somebody's bail to for them to come work for you, Esau will buy out, you know different people's debts just so that that person can be in debt to them you know that's that's a form of you know rigorous it's like that's just a transformation of you know one plantation to another but this what Yahweh Shai did when he bought our debt it was really to to set us free because he's going to give us a better life he's given us that life in, in righteousness because really what we're in debt to right now is sin you know and the wages of sin are death and Yahweh Shai you know conquered death you know he liberated us from that you know when he bought even when he bought our debt when he bought us from that debt yep yep and that's what he's finna do now man you know like i say he took the death for us and now he's finna physically you know come get us man you know we're gonna be truly you know redeemed you know i got yes, you got yeah. bro this is Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Abishai, is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, and he have sent me to bind, bend up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. Yeah, to proclaim liberty to the captives, you know, because we are yet, like Scripture says, we are yet this day, you know, within our captivity. <laughs> You see, but what's going to get us out of that captivity, man? Thy redeemer. You see, the redeemer, you have a shot. Go ahead. Verse two, it said, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all their mourn. Yep, the day of vengeance. You see, because we're going to we're going to get into that, man. You know, the avenger. The uh, the avenger of blood, you know. But we what we'll probably do, <clears throat> we're gonna do that one by itself, you know, because that's another, you know, whole topic. Once you get the spirit flowing on that, but Lord, we we we'll get into that. That's gonna be the avenger of blood, you see, because that's part of our custom too, you know. Your house shot is coming to fulfill, you know, that custom. Um, you had some or not? You had some mescara? That was it. Ah, oh, yeah, that was it. Okay, come. Yeah, I know. I had some, but you said we were going back there to a different topic. So uh, I get the Isaiah. Yeah, boy. yeah. Yeah, get the Isaiah. Because um, yeah, I'm thinking there's going to be a whole nother, whole nother run. Yeah, I showed yeah, you. Yeah, go get Yeah. Yeah, get the Isaiah. Boy. You said Isaiah 49 24? Yep, yep. Yep, it said Isaiah 4. It said, uh, should a prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Hey, he said, should a prey be taken away from the captive? All right. <laughs> or the lawful captive delivered? And who is that lawful captive in Israel? All right, read again. It said, uh, should a prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive Delivered. Yep, go ahead. But thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty should be taken away. The prey of the terrible should be delivered. Yeah, so the, the prey, it said the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. All right. And the prey 
gonna be delivered. Go ahead. It said, For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. Go ahead. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they should be drunk with their own blood. It's sweet. It's with sweet wine and all flesh that I, the Lord, you have a shall shine in thy savor, and that would deem the bite of one of the Yeah, so he said he gonna feed them that oppress us with their own blood. And what is that speaking of? Because in World War Three, a lot of these Edomites gonna kill each other. You know, a lot of these Edomites gonna kill each other in World War Three, even in the chaos, you know, that's coming to America. A lot of Edomites gonna kill each other. I'll see. Yeah, how about Shema Al Shai gonna redeem us in a very, you know, horrific, you know, glorious way? You know, it ain't just gonna be a transition, all right, between one man and another. No, it's gonna be chaos, it's gonna be war. He said, out of all this, then you're gonna know that I, I am that redeemer because he's gonna redeem us in a very chaotic, bloody, you know, horrific way. But we're going to be redeemed. You see? The elect going into those chariots, that's redemption. That's the that's your how we start doing the, the, the um the duty, all right, of a redeemer kinsman. He's buying us back. <laughs> you see? So he already purchased us with his blood, and then he's gonna physically come get us. Matter of fact, let's break that down. Uh Corral, get Romans five and five. You know, we were close to it. And if y'all brother got any last precept, you know, we'll get it. This Romans chapter five, verse five. It say, in hope make if not a shame, because the love of your how about Shema Shah is shed abroad in our hearts. Yep, by, go ahead. The, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Amashiach died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man would one even dare to die. Yeah, it says <laughs> for a righteous man, scarcely will one die, you know, for someone that's righteous, you know. And then for a good man, all right, pre-adventure, man, would that be very rare somebody to die? All right, go ahead. Verse 8, it said, But Yahweh commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Amashiach died for us. Yep. So the most high, because you got to understand, like that was his that was his real son. That he gave for Israel, you know, that was that was his actual son that he sent down in flesh to be that sacrifice, because it got to the point where Most High wasn't accepting sacrifice from Israel, you know, he was done with accepting sacrifice from Jake, man, because Jake had ran into the ground, you know, Jake had you know got cute on the finesse, on the half sacrifice already. You know, on deck for premeditated sin. They were pretty much going through the motion, but still doing what they wanted to do. So the most I pretty much he just cut off, you know, sacrifice. Matter of fact, get that in um Isaiah. So I'll get that in Isaiah one. And and eleven. Yep. Get Isaiah one and eleven. Turn. This is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Saith the Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of, of, of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Keep going. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? There is no more vain oblations. Incense is a, an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is it is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. 
Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hated. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Yo, so pretty mo most I was cussing Jake ass out, man. You know? All right? And he knew Jake was right. Jake was doing these sacrifices, but they were wicked. You know? Because if he had a lot of, you know, livestock, you know, Jake seen it is that's the more, you know, it's the more lead what he had to do wickedness, man. You know? Same, same thing in this society. You know, they, they the more uh, wealth you obtain, the better warriors you can uh, um, hire to, to fight yeah. for you to, to get away with, you know, murder down there. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes even murder. Yep. Yeah. But then those same people, you know, with wealth, <laughs> all right, and get away with wickedness, what do they do? You know, they'll show themselves, donate to charity, all right? They might buy some bikes on Christmas, hand out some turkeys, because it's an outward showing. See, that sacrifice was an outward showing. That's why, you know, it was a shadow of things to come, you know? It was, it was an outward showing. But Jake internally won right, inwardly won right. See, we how was shot, we're becoming right inwardly. <laughs> you see, and it's showing outwardly. You know? Sure. The most I was cussing Jake ass out about them sacrifices, and he ain't wanna he ain't wanna, he ain't wanna have no more part of it, man. So the only thing that he would take with only thing that he would accept was the blood of your how shot, man. And he's gonna explain it in the Romans. Go ahead, bro. Romans 5 and 9. Yep. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. Yeah, so we're going to be how we justified by the blood. Because that blood opened up a grace period. You see? I mean, how shot shed their blood, they opened up a grace period for Israel. Now, you're going to have the elect that's going to use that grace period, all right, to pretty much dedicate their life to your house shot, the man that purchased them. <laughs> you see? The elect is spending this grace period and conforming unto your house shot. So that's why we're going to be justified by the blood because that blood opened up a grace period. And within that grace period, you had the elect, all right, scribing for righteousness in the grace period, man. Yeah, lick not gonna buy down to buy out, you know. They're not gonna denounce you how about Shima Shah under any circumstances, even unto death, and that's what's gonna justify the elect, you know. So read verse nine again. This is Romans chapter five, verse nine. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. Yep, we should be saved. From wrath, what did that judgment just to come? All right, verse 10. Verse 10 it said, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahweh by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. Yeah, so his death, you know, that's what appeased Yahweh shot. Because those those sacrifices used to appease Yahweh by Shema Shah when they were sincere. You see, when Jake, you know, would do sin offering, you know, these peace offerings out of sincerity, that appeased Yahweh by Shema Shah. But it, it was never about the um the animals. You see, it was about the sincerity of our people. You know, that's what was appeasing to Yahweh by Shema Shah. Matter of fact, before you read, um, we're gonna read verse ten again. But get uh, so I'll get Psalm fifty one. And 16. You see? Uh, that's the spirit. I, I was just about to say that. Uh, Psalm uh, 51 and 16. Yep. For thou for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of the Most High are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh, yeah, how would thou wilt not despise? Yeah, so you see that? And King David even knew that back then. That's why he was known as the man after the most high his own heart. You know, it wasn't about the actual animal. You know, you got Jake in 2021. <laughs> All right. 
still talking about the Levitical priesthood. He out of there, they go get it. You see, it was never about an actual animal. It was about the sincerity of Israel. That's what Yahweh by Shema Shah was concerned about. So it was like, look, a uh, contrite heart, a broken and contrite heart, which is a heart that's sorrowful. Because when we really come into Yahweh Shah, you know, we became sorrowful, like, damn, you know, we were off. You know, we was wrong. That's why brothers had that zeal when they first come in. You know, you want to turn the kitchen table over. You know, because eating that big ass pork chop. You know, you want to come in, rip the Christian light down. You, <laughs> you know, you and the family get together. The Bible already open. <laughs> you know. Hey, because he what's that deal? Because you like, damn, they I feel you you feel played, like man, these people you feel like everybody knew, ain't nobody tell you nothing, man. You see? Yeah, because that, that's the whole point of uh, offering, you know, the without blemish bulls and, and lambs and goats, you know, it's like the, the best of your flock, you know, it's like the best of the yep. best is a nice animal. So whenever you yep. sacrifice it. It was to make you feel bad, make you feel like you fucked up because you just lost, you know, one of your best livestock. And I was like, I have to put down my livestock because I committed this iniquity. Yeah. But it really wasn't about losing, you know, your best livestock. It was about you recognizing that you fucked up. And then how much more when it's Yahweh Shai, you know, a man without blemish. Yep. You know? When Yahweh Shai sacrificed, you know, his life for your fuck up, that makes you feel contrite and broken you're like damn so whenever you see people willfully going off you know it's it's like they're they're the ones nailing Yahweh shot to the cross man it's like yo you're not even trying you know that's why it's wicked when you know people just you know hurting goats just so that they could commit sin that's the same spirit back but they just you know willfully go off man yep i say the same in your back Hey, since you said that, uh, what's that in, uh, yep, I, I read it, you know, you can break it down, bro. Wait a minute, you fell off. Device not exactly. Oh, he fell off. Yep. All right. This is, um, uh, Hebrews 10 and 26. It says, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You see? <laughs> so if you willfully, you got this willful spirit, you know, that you, you're going to do what you want to do. All right? Ain't no more sacrifice, man. Now you're going to have to deal with it in a time of judgment, man. See, people don't see... We not even the believers, you know, of the hopeful lake, Lord willing, we are of that number. See, we not gonna really appreciate what Yahweh Shah did until we see how these people finna start be putting the death out here, man. When we see the way, when we start seeing it with our eyes, because right now we read about things that's happened. But when we start seeing these things happen back to back to back to back, all right. When we start seeing mass death, when we start seeing horrific death, then we're going to really appreciate what you, that death of Yahweh shot over 2,000 years ago. Because that's, that's what's stopping us from getting these deaths that's going to go out. You know? And like you said, it wasn't about no animal, man. You see? <laughs> it wasn't about the animal because what... <laughs> What 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 benefit did the most I get out of animal getting slaughtered? Like what what did he gain? <laughs> you know, like he you know, like he got a, 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 a you know a ranch in the spirit realm full of all the sacrificed animals, man. No, man, he gained nothing from that. It was all about the integrity of Israel, man. And see when Israel lost their integrity, he didn't want he didn't want nothing to do with them sacrifices, man. And Yahweh Shah was the only thing. That he would accept. And only people, only Israelites he's gonna accept is those that after Yahweh Shah did what he did, started to conform unto Yahweh Shah, you know, to sincerely 
um, conform to your house shot. And if you're not doing it, that means you're not covered by their blood, man. And when judgment go out, all right, <laughs> it's just going to be, you're going to be wide open out here, man. You know? So, uh, uh, let's read, let's read that. That Romans 5 and 10 again. You can get out. You had something else I know? Yeah, I had a quick one. All right, Zah, you had some. Hmm. Get that Romans five and ten. We'll end it on that. But you get yours, I not. I just uh straight to the point. This is Act twenty one and one. My son, hast thou sinned? Do so no more, but ask pardon for that former sins. Mm -hmm. you no, know, basically with Yep. Yeah. And say do it no more. And what you how shall I say to the to the woman that he forgave? You know for adultery. All right, he said, no you are forgiven, but go and sin no more. Which we don't, you know, we still sin, but see, it's not willful, you know. We don't just go out into life with no standard. No, we have a standard, we uh rehearse the righteous act and we strive for the best of our abilities, man. Because we really appreciate that sacrifice that Yahweh shot did, man, you know. And it's just like if. <laughs> you know, if we was uh, if we, you know, were all brothers, and our father gave us all an inheritance, you know, ten million dollars a piece, you see, and with, with I now with your ten million, you know, you went and started you a uh, a detailing business. You you got you a detailing you detailing cars. Ah, he started him a, a landscape business. You see. The corral, he started him a, uh, you know, a, a, a computer tech business. You know, that shows the father that what? These men, they appreciated <laughs> the money I gave them. You know, they appreciated, they utilized it. You know, but then if I'm in the script club every night, you see, I bought four million dollars worth of car, you know. I got eight women pregnant. You see, they were like, damn. <laughs> this man just gonna ran through, he don't give a damn. You see, but you, you brothers, you spent that money wisely because you considered, you know, what your father went through to get that money. You didn't want to see it to, <laughs> just disappear. You want to add something to it. And see, that's how the elect are, man. We appreciate the, the sacrifice of your house guy, you know? So we want to add to that sacrifice by what committing our life unto your house shot, man, making you know good on the investment that your house shot, you know, put into brothers, man. You know, sure. Hey, that's that's what the word appreciate means in the sense of like monetary value or really the value of anything. Yep. You know, when something appreciates it rises in value. So if you appreciate you know, you how should I sacrifice you? You, you know, appreciate it. You know, you'd rise in value. You know, yep. you take that that mercy as an opportunity to to repent. You know, to yep. be better yep. from our from our former state of you know wicked life, whatever you know you were once into before this truth. To make the most of it, man. You know, to make the most of it. And those that appreciate you, how should I sacrifice? You know, it's being shown, you know, by the action, man. You know, on camera and off camera, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, Corral, you still got that? Yeah, that Romans? Uh, yeah, read that and we'll close the door, bro. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahweh by the death of his son, much more being reconciled. We should be saved by his life. Yep, saved by his life, which means we're going to be physically delivered. We're going to be physically redeemed. You know, when Yahweh Shai comes back, you know, he died, you know, so we can have grace. But he lives so he can come deliver us, <laughs> you know. So Yahweh Shai, he's the redeemer of kinsmen, all right, for Israel, beginning with the elect, you see. But uh, that was the point, you know, we pray that John brothers, 
you know, y'all few sisters edified once again. We're gonna give all praise on and glory unto Yahweh. Now, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS rule well, teach well, being great examples towards younger brothers. Peace and blessings, salutations, and hopeful lit. All right, till next time, stay shallow warm. Quam Yasha Allah. We'll see you soon.